Hello, massage nerds. Today we're going to do the review for the skeletal system. I'm going to start with the introduction and then I'll move on to the questions. So there are 206 bones in the body. Babies are born with 300 bones. However, when they start fusing together, we end up with 206, 80 of which are in the axial skeleton, 126 in the appendicular skeleton, and there's 100 in between your hands and your feet, 54 in the hands, 52 in the feet, so that adds up to 106 bones that uh, are in the appendicular skeleton. The anatomy of the skeletal system are the bones and cartilage, the joints and ligaments. Remember, ligaments attach bone to bone, whereas tendons attach muscle to bone. The physiology of the skeletal system is it helps for support, for protection, protecting your uh, major organs, for movements, the muscles pull on the bones to help you move, for blood cell production, it uh, happens in the red bone marrow, and for fat storage in the yellow bone marrow, and for mineral storage for phosphorus, calcium, sodium, magnesium. So now let's jump into the questions. Where in bone are blood cells produced? In the red bone marrow. Which are the following is a term used to describe blood cell production? Hematopoiesis. Which of the following are bone destroying cells? Osteoclast. Osteoclast with a C is for crushing, destroying blood cells. Which of the following are bone forming cells? Osteoblast with a B for building, for forming cells. Which of the following is the hard outer shelf of a bone? Compact bone. What is the central passageway of an osteon containing the bone's blood supply and nerves? The Haversian canals. These canals contain the bone's blood supply and nerves. Which of the following best describes a lighter and less dense area of a bone? Spongy bone. It is uh, lighter and less dense, and it looks like a sponge appearance. Most bones in the spine are classified as which? Irregular, because they are odd-shaped. Which of the following are small round bones embedded in tendons found in the hands and feet and the knee? Sesamoid bones. Which of the following is the term used to describe the two ends of a long bone? Epiphyses. What covers the articular surfaces of bones? Hyaline cartilage. This cartilage is pearly, white, bluish, and has a firm, glossy consistency. What is the term used to describe long cylindrical shaft of a bone? Diaphysis. It is usually narrower than the epiphyses. Which is a term used to describe the dense, fibrous sheath and surrounds the diaphysis? Periosteum. This sheath is noticeably absent in the epiphyses. What is the term used to describe the hollow space within the center of the diaphysis? The medullary cavity. It is filled with red and yellow bone marrow. What is the term used to describe the process of bone development? 
ossification. It begins during fetal development and continues throughout adulthood. The skeletal system is divided into which of the following regions? Axial and appendicular. Which of the following bones is located in the axial skeleton? The sternum. Which of the following bones is located in the appendicular skeleton? The scapula. Which of the following is a rounded knuckle-shaped bony projection and forms a joint? A condyle. Which of the following is a shallow depression in a bone? A fossa. What term is used to describe where bones come together to, or join? Articulation. Articulations, arthrosis, and joints are the same thing. Which of the following joints has extremely limited movement capabilities? Synarthrotic. Which of the following are freely movable joints? Diarthrotic. Diarthrotic joints are common in the appendicular skeleton. Which type of fluid is found in cavities of freely movable joints? Synovial joints. The synovial fluid is viscous, lubricating, shock absorbing, and for joint nourishment. Which of the following are flattened, sac-like structures located between ligaments and bones within the joints? Bursa. Which of the following is the bending of a joint so that the angle of the joint decreases? Flexion. Which of the following is a movement of a joint so that the body parts moves toward the midline of the body? Adduction. Like when you're adding it back to your body. Which of the following is a conical movement in which the distal end of a structure moves in a circle and the proximal end remains relatively fixed? Circumduction. Which of the following is movement at a joint in an anterior direction? Protraction. Like when you're sticking out your mandible. Which of the following is a type of lateral or outward rotation? Supination. Like when you're holding a bowl of soup. Which of the following is a movement of the ankle as the foot moves superiorly in the direction of the top of the foot? Dorsiflexion. It's the direction of the dorsum and the toes are moving towards the shin or the tibia, like when you're walking on your heels. Which of the following is elevation of the medial edge of the foot so that it turns towards the midline of the body? Inversion. Which of the following joints have movements limited to flexion and extension only? Hinge joints. Which of the following joints have movements limited to rotation? Pivot joints, like when you say no between C1 and C2. Which of the following joints found in the thumb possess a concave surface facing one direction and a convex surface facing the other direction? Like a saddle. 
saddle joints. They're only found in the thumb. Which of the following joints contain an oval-shaped surface that fits into a concave surface, allowing the bone to travel back and forth and from side to side? Ellipsoidal joints, also known as condyloid joints. Which of the following types of joints are also called condyloid joints? <laughs> Ellipsoidal joints. Which of the following joints offer the greatest range of motion? Ball and socket. They permit all movements in all the planes, including flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, circumduction, and rotation which, by the way, these are the easiest to dislocate. Which of the following joints provide movement in all three cardinal planes? Multiplanar. Which of the following joints provide movement in one axis? Uniaxial. Which of the following pathologies is an accumulation of synovial fluid behind the knee? Baker cyst. Which of the following pathologies results from deposits of uric acid in crystals and joints? Gout. Uric acid is a waste product normally excreted by the kidneys. Which of the following pathologies is characterized by inflammation of the joint capsule and progressive joint damage leading to loss of articular cartilage? Osteoarthritis. Which of the following pathologies is loss of normal bone density and increased susceptibility to fractures? osteoporosis. Your bone becomes very porous. Which of the following pathologies is inflammation of the bursa? Bursitis. Remember the suffix itis means inflammation or, or hot. Which of the following conditions is an exaggeration of the normal posterior curvature in the thoracic spine? Kyphosis. Which of the following conditions is a lateral curvature in the normally straight vertical line of the spine, usually in the thoracic region? Scoliosis. Which of the following conditions is an exaggeration of the normal anterior curvature in the lumbar spine? Lordosis, also known as hyperlordosis. Which of the following pathologies is chronic inflammation, systemic arthritis, and destroys synovial membranes? Rheumatoid arthritis. Which of the following conditions is a pouch-like structure filled with synovial fluid that arises from the joint capsule or tendon sheets? ganglion sheaths. These common cysts arise from joint capsules on tendon sheaths, usually of the wrist. 90% of them are on the wrist. What is endochondrial ossification mean? Formation of bone from cartilage models. That's it for the skeletal system. Good luck on your test. And next will be the muscular system review. Till the next time, create a great day.